Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about collision theory and how collision theory relates to um, relates to kinetics and uh, the speed of a reaction. So um, what we have to realize is that reactions don't just occur, there's actually a molecular reason why reactions occur. And, excuse me, with this molecular reason why they occur, that gives us the speed with which the reaction um, the reaction proceeds. And so there are three qualifying factors for a reaction, okay, in order for a reaction to occur, okay? The first one makes kind of a lot of sense, is that the molecules have to be close to each other, okay? They have to collide. Okay. In order for a reaction to occur, the reaction, the molecules have to collide with each other. Okay. The second thing is that um, those molecules, once they collide, they must have enough energy to cause the bonds to break. Bond breaking takes energy, and so for the molecules when they collide, if they don't have enough energy, they are not going to break the bonds, therefore there's not going to be the energy to cause the bonds to then reform. So it would just be like bouncing off of each other like a, two super balls coming together. There's nothing happening there. Okay. And not only do they have to have the right energy, but then they also have to have they also have to have the right orientation. So if my hand here is a bond, okay, this this may not be the right orientation. The other, the molecule must, may have to come in from this direction, okay? And so if all three of these reaction conditions are met, then we're going to have to, then we have a reaction occurring, okay? And so molecules must collide. Um, the colliding molecules must have enough energy to break the bonds, and then uh, they have to have the right orientation. Okay, and so what if we change the reaction conditions? How does this change the rate? Okay, well, changing the rate, um, changing the rate of the reaction is really changing how the molecules are hitting each other, whether they're hitting each other with enough energy, or whether they're hitting each other at all, or whether they're hitting each other with the right orientation. Now, I will tell you that it's really hard to control a molecule's orientation in space, whether it looks like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. That's something very hard, and we're not going to talk about this, okay? Um, we're really going to talk about the collisions, increasing or decreasing the number of collisions, and we're going to talk about the energy, okay, the energy that the collisions have, okay. So we should be able to figure out that reaction conditions affect the um, the conditions. Sorry, the 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 collisions that are occurring between molecules. So reaction conditions. Let's see. Let's make sure that we have this right, okay? So reaction conditions affect the collisions, okay? Make sure I say that right. Reaction conditions will affect the collisions. So what are some reaction conditions that we can change? We can change the concentration of the reactants. Um, typically, we're dealing with the reactants in this, in, this, in this case. So if we change the concentration of the reactants, and here in this case I have a um, I have an exclamation point, not because um, we're doing concentration factorial, but mainly because we're because it's the thing that we can control the easiest. Um, and so, if we increase the concentration, that means that there's more molecules, and if there's more molecules, that means you're more likely to have more you're you're going to have more collisions. Okay, there's going to be more collisions occurring. Now, when you have low concentration, or if you change the concentration and make it smaller, that means there's going to be less molecules, and they're not going to they're not going to collide as often. Okay, so that will slow the reaction down. 
Okay. Now temperature is also something that we can kind of easily can control. Um, and so we can control the temperature. Now when we increase the temperature of a reaction, if we do a, a reaction at high temperature, remember that temperature is defined as the speed of the molecule, okay, the average speed of the molecule. So, or the average kinetic energy of the molecule, which is then related to the speed to be more technical. But, you know, it's how fast the molecule is moving. The faster it moves, the higher the temperature. So if we increase the temperature, if we have a high temperature, that means that the reaction, it's not that you're changing the number of collisions, but when they collide, they are going to collide with more energy. Okay? And, this, and the opposite is then true for low um, temperature systems. If the temperature is going, is, is done at low temperatures, that means the molecules are moving slower. It's not that they're colliding more frequently, or less frequently, it's that they are colliding with less energy because they are now moving just so much slower, okay? And so this idea of collision theory really gets us talking about the molecular reason for why rates of reaction, or why reactions occur, and then changing reaction conditions can get us to why the rates can change, okay? now. We'll talk about catalysts. For anybody out there that knows anything about biology, catalysts lowers the energy needed. So it's not that we're affecting the collisions. What we're doing here with a catalyst is we're lowering, lowering the amount of energy required for the collision. Okay, that's what a catalyst does. Okay, and so if we have a catalyst, and make sure that I can let's make sure that I can interpret this. If there is a catalyst present. Okay, catalyst present, presence of a catalyst, yes, if that catalyst is there, it lowers the energy needed, okay? And so if we lower the amount of energy needed, that means the collision then doesn't need to be as energetic in order for the reaction to occur, okay? If there is no um, catalyst, then the amount of energy needed will stay the same, okay? Now, let's talk really quickly. What is the opposite of catalyst? Biology students, anybody, anybody, anybody? Okay, and the opposite of a catalyst is an inhibitor. Okay, an inhibitor is the opposite. So, um, and I just bring this up for merely a teaching point. Um, not that I'm going to ask you about inhibitors, but I just wanted to show that it totally is the opposite of a catalyst. When there is an inhibitor present, what it does is it raises the energy needed in a reaction. So that means it doesn't change the number of collisions. It just means that you need to have more energy in the collision, and that's how the reaction is inhibited from going forward. There's less molecules that are colliding with the required energy, so the rate slows down. Okay. So this is how collision theory all relates to um, chemical kinetics and the speed of the reaction. Uh, so hopefully that all of this makes perfect sense.